For our fourth Music Theory Fundamentals lecture, we'll start with a demonstration. What is this? There are several correct answers to this question, of course. Some of you may have said, well, that's a scale. If this is your answer, congratulations, you're correct. Some of you may have more specifically said, that sounds like a major scale to me. This is also a correct answer. And a few of you may have correctly identified this as an E flat major scale. If you fall into this category, congratulations, you have what's known as perfect pitch. No, perfect pitch isn't when you toss a flute into the garbage can and it lands without hitting the rim. Perfect pitch is sometimes referred to as pitch memory. My apologies for the music joke. I can tell flute jokes because I'm a flutist. Today we will discuss constructing major scales. There are three methods for constructing major scales that will be discussed today. The first is whole step and half step order. The second is what I call the key signature method and the third uses the circle of fifths. Let's get started. What makes a scale major? In order to answer that question, we'll need to take a closer look at our piano keyboard. You may be wondering why, every time we have shown this two octave keyboard, the lowest pictured key in the graphic is a C. C isn't the first letter in the alphabet. A is. Why don't we start on A? One of the reasons is because when we start on a C white key and play the following white keys in order, up one octave or eight steps to the next C, C, D, E, F, G, A, B, and C, we have something that sounds like a major scale. Now, some of you might be saying, what do you mean I recognize that as a major scale? You can't tell me what I think and don't think. Okay, okay. Sometimes it's easier to recognize that you do know the sound of a major scale. It's a very familiar sound, but we need to compare that sound to something that is not a major scale. What if instead of walking up an octave from C to C, we instead start on a G? We changed the order of half steps and whole steps here. And at the beginning, it sounded just like a major scale. But I'm guessing for those of you who didn't know what to expect, there was probably one point in hearing that scale that you thought, that's not what I expected to hear for the next pitch. Major scales have a recognizable order of whole step and half step intervals. When we start on a C and only play white keys in order, we hear whole step, whole step, half step, whole step, whole step, whole step, half step. You'll notice the two places where we have half steps in the C major scale are the two places where we have white key neighbors, E and F, and B and C. This order of intervals, whole, whole, half, whole, 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 half, is what creates the distinctive major tonality. Let's try this starting on a different key. I'm going to create a D major scale by starting on a D and using this same sequence of intervals 
whole step. D to E. Whole step. E to F sharp. Half step. F sharp to G. Whole step. G to A. Whole step. A to B. Whole step. B to C sharp. And finally, half step. C sharp to D. It sounds like this. Whole, whole, half, whole, 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 half. If you're asked to write a major scale on a staff, and you plan to use the whole, whole, half, whole, 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 half method, what do you think the first step should be? No surprise here. Put it on the staff. Let's practice. Write an E major scale. Use the whole, whole, half, whole, 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 half method. Start by putting it on the staff. The first note starts on an E line, and the scale includes eight notes from E to E. So the order of pitches will be line, space, line, space, line, space, line, space. Now it's important to know that every major scale has some kind of A, B, C, D, E, F, and G in it. There might be a sharp assigned to any of those pitches or a flat, but we never skip any of those letters when we're spelling a major scale. Also, every major key has only one A, B, C, D, E, F, and G in it. You'll never have a D flat and a D natural in the same major scale. So, we're writing an E major scale, starting with a whole step. E, up two half steps to F sharp. Let's put that on our staff too. Next, we have another whole step. F sharp to G sharp. Now we have our half step. G sharp needs to go to the neighboring key, which is an A natural. We won't need to include any accidentals for this pitch. Whole step to B, whole step to C sharp. Let's include that on our staff. Whole step to D sharp. So we'll need to include that. And finally, half step down to E natural. Let's do another one. Write an A flat major scale. Use the whole, whole, half, whole, 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 half method. Start by putting it on the staff. The first note starts on an A space, and the scale includes eight notes, space, line, space, line, etc., from A flat to A flat. We'll start by putting it on the staff. First interval, A flat to B flat. Next, B flat to C. C to D flat for my half step. D flat to E flat for my whole step. E flat up two half steps to F natural for my next whole step. F to G, and then G up to A flat. If you arrive somewhere other than that tonic at the end, you probably miscalculated somewhere along the way, and you should start again. Now it's your turn. Using the whole, whole, half, whole, 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 half method, write an F major scale. What's the first step? Put it on the staff. 
pause the video if you need a little more time. We've written from an F to an F. Now, starting on that F, put your whole steps and half steps in major scale order. Do we need to add any sharps or flats? If your whole steps and half steps look like this, with a B flat on the keyboard and a B flat on the staff, you have the correct answer. This is an F major scale. One more for practice. Using the whole, whole, half, whole, 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 half method, write a B major scale. What's the first step? Put it on the staff. Pause the video if you need a little more time. Starting on a B, put your whole steps and half steps in major scale order. Do we need to add any sharps or flats? If your keyboard and your staff look like this, once again, you have the correct answer. This is a B major scale. Time for today's second method of scale construction. What are these? Many of you correctly identify them as key signatures. Some of you might be asking now, what is a key signature? We see key signatures show up at the beginning of every piece of music that's in print today. When we have a key signature at the beginning of the line, as pictured below, that key signature applies to the entire line. In other words, the F sharp at the beginning of each line means that every F in that line is an F sharp unless otherwise indicated. So how will knowledge of major key signatures help us to write major scales? This is where we get into the key signature method. Every major scale, except C major, has either flats or sharps in the key signature. There are no major scales with both flats and sharps. Major scales have flats or sharps, except C major, which we already know has no sharps or flats. We know that because we constructed a C major scale by counting whole, whole, half, whole, 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 half, starting and ending on C, and only using white keys. On the left, we see examples of key signatures with flats, and on the right, we see examples of key signatures with sharps. Key signatures have an order of flats and an order of sharps. First, we will learn the order of flats, and then we will learn what it means. The order of flats is B, E, A, D, G, C, F. There are several tricks you can use to help you remember this order. It starts by spelling a word, bead, and ends with go call Fred. Or if you prefer, Great colorful flamingos. 
for the mathematicians amongst us, we can use greatest common factor. Use the method that works best for you. Now we know what the order of flats is, but what does order of flats mean? As you can see in our examples of key signatures here with flats in them, flats come in a certain order. And when you have one flat in your key signature, it's always and only going to be a B flat when we have a major scale. When we have two flats, it's always B and E. Three flats is B, E, A, four flats, B flat, E flat, A flat, and D flat, and so on. Each time we add flats, we always start at the beginning with B flat and work our way through the order of flats. So let's learn the key signature method now for scales with flats. Step one, name the flats in order from the beginning. Step two, go to the name of the scale or key. Step three, go one further. So what does this mean? Well, we're going to take our order of flats and name them in order from the beginning. We know that our scale or key is named A flat, and we need to name our flats in order from the beginning. We'll start with B, then go to E and A, and one more, D. So the flats in an A flat major scale are B flat, E flat, A flat, that's the name of our scale, and D flat. What if our key is G flat? We'll start by naming the flats in order from the beginning. We'll go to the name of the scale or key, which in this case is G flat, and go one further. So the flats in a G flat major scale or G flat major key are B, E, A, D, G, and C. Let's practice on a staff. We're going to write a D flat major scale. When using the key signature method to write a major scale, what is the first step? You know where I'm going with this by now. Put it on the staff. Since the letter name is D, we'll start on a D and end on a D with a space, line, space, line order. Now we take our order of flats and name them from the beginning going to the name of the scale, which in this case is D flat, and going one further. B flat, E flat, A flat, D flat, we've got two of them. That means we've arrived to the name of the scale and we need one more. G flat, this is a D flat major scale. What if we're writing a B-flat major scale? Well, you know the first step. Put it on the staff. Since our letter name is B, we start and end on a B. Now we'll add the flats in order from the beginning, going to the name of the scale, and going one further. B-flat. Oh, we've got two of them. That means we're already at the name of the scale. We need one more, and that's an E-flat. This is our B-flat major scale. Your turn. Write an E-flat major scale. Use the key signature method. Pause the video if you need a little more time.
if you started by writing from an E to an E and then added your flats, B flat, E flat, that's the name of the scale, and one more, A flat, you've got the correct answer. So now let's talk about the order of sharps. There are several ways that we can construct the order of sharps. The first way is to take our order of flats and put it backwards. You'll notice that if we read from right to left, we see B, E, A, D, G, C, F. There are other ways to remember our order of sharps. Some people like the saying, fat cats go down alleys eating birds. I once had a student who wanted to be an ornithologist when she grew up, and when I gave her this saying to help her remember the order of sharps, she said, oh please, can we change it to bacon? So, for her, we said fat cats go down alleys eating bacon. No pigs were harmed in the making of this lecture. My new favorite mnemonic device is Funky cows go dancing at every barn. The order of sharps works the same way as the order of flats, in that when we have one sharp, it's always F sharp. When we have two, it's always F and C. Then F, C, G. Four sharps is always F sharp, C sharp, G sharp, and D sharp, and so on. We always start at the beginning and add from there. So let's talk about the key signature method for scales with sharps. We had a three-step process for keys with flats in them. We also have a three-step process for keys that have sharps, but it's slightly different. Step one, find the leading tone. Now some of you may be thinking, wait a second, leading tone? We haven't learned what that is yet. What's a leading tone? I'll explain. A leading tone is a diatonic half step below tonic. And I know some of you are thinking, wait a second, tonic, that's a new word too. What is this tonic? Tonic is the name of the scale or key. In A major, A is tonic. In D flat major, D flat is tonic. In F sharp major, F sharp is tonic. So if tonic is A, the leading tone, a diatonic half step below, is G sharp. Remember, it can't be A flat because A flat is a chromatic half step below A. If tonic is E, the leading tone is D sharp because D sharp is a diatonic half step below E. Some of you may be asking, why do we call it a leading tone? I'll explain. I'm going to play an A major scale for you, starting on A, which is tonic, and ending on the leading tone, which is G sharp. Is anything bothering you? My guess is that you're either confused or frustrated. Let's hear that again, an A major scale ending on G sharp, the seventh scale degree. If I haven't frustrated you yet, I'll try again. And one more, just to drive the point home.
If you're like most humans, you either laughed or breathed a huge sigh of relief when I played that final chord. This is because the role of the leading tone is to lead us to tonic. As long as I stopped playing on that seventh scale degree, that diatonic half step below tonic, that G sharp leading tone, your ears kept wanting me to resolve up a diatonic half step to tonic, which was A, the name of the scale or key. Tonic is home. Benjamin Zander presented this concept in his TED Talk video when he finally arrived home, or tonic, at the end of the Chopin piece he performed. Remember the quote, we all know where home is. Practice finding the leading tone. If tonic is B, what's the leading tone? The leading tone would be A sharp. What if tonic is D? Tonic is D. The leading tone is C sharp. Here's one that's a little more difficult. What is my leading tone if tonic is F sharp? It looks like an F natural. It's spelled like an E sharp. That's because E sharp is a diatonic half step below F sharp. If we called it an F natural, we'd be spelling a chromatic half step below. So we figured out step one, find the leading tone. Step two, Name the sharps in order from the beginning. Step three, stop on the leading tone. We don't go one further like we did when we use the key signature method for scales with flats. This time, when we get to the leading tone, that's the final sharp. Let's practice with our order of sharps. Remember that A major scale that I kept playing? Remember how I annoyingly kept ending on a G sharp leading tone? Well, we can use that information now to learn which sharps are in an A major key signature. So we found the leading tone, it's G sharp, and now we're going to name the sharps in order from the beginning. F sharp, C sharp, G sharp. And this is where we stop. So the sharps in A major are F, C, and G. Let's practice on a staff. A major scale. When using the key signature method to write a major scale, what's the first step? I know, I know, you're getting tired of it. Put it on the staff. I start by writing from an A to an A. I find my leading tone. It's some kind of G, and in this case, it's a G sharp. Then I name my sharps in order from the beginning. I'll put my G sharp in so I know when to stop. Starting from the beginning, F sharp, C sharp, and G sharp. Since I've already written my leading tone in, I know that's the last one. What if we wanted to write a B major scale? I'll start by putting it on the staff. And I find my leading tone. It's always the seventh scale degree. It's always one diatonic half step below tonic. 
it will always be the note that comes right before our final tonic note at the top. So we can put that sharp next to the A right now. Then we take our order of sharps and name them from the beginning, ending on the leading tone. F sharp, C sharp, G sharp, D sharp, and A sharp. We've already written that one. That's the leading tone. We've finished writing in our sharps. This is a B major scale. Now it's your turn. Write an F sharp major scale using the key signature method. Pause the video if you need a little more time. If you started by writing from an F to an F, then you found your leading tone and wrote your sharp next to it. And then you named your sharps in order, F, C, G, D, A, and E, which is our leading tone. Then you know that in an F sharp major scale, everything is sharp except B. This is an F sharp major scale. One more for practice. Write a C sharp major scale. Again, you can always pause the video if you need more time. If you started by writing from a C to a C, then determined that your B is a B sharp leading tone, then you used your order of sharps to determine that we need F, C, G, D, A, E, and B, all to have sharps in front of them? And you've just figured out that in a C sharp major scale, everything's sharp. This actually makes a lot of sense when we think about our first method for scale construction, whole, whole, half, whole, 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 half. When I start on a C, and play only white keys, all naturals. This is the order of whole steps and half steps. This is a major scale. If I take every pitch in that C major scale and adjust them all up by a chromatic half step so that they all have a sharp in front of them, I've kept the same intervals, whole, whole, half, whole, 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 half. So in the key of C major, everything is natural. In the key of C sharp major, everything is sharp. And in the key of C flat major, you guessed it, everything's flat. Now we know how to use the key signature method when our scale has flats and when our scale has sharps. We already know a scale can't have both flats and sharps when it's a major scale. The question is, how do we know which is which? How do we know if a scale has flats or sharps? Rather than answering those questions directly, I'm going to show you with examples and see if you can figure it out. First, I will name some major scales in random order that have flats in them. G flat, B flat, A flat, E flat. Now I will name some major scales in random order that have sharps in them. G. B, A, E.
What difference do you notice between these two groups? If you said the first group includes flats and the second list doesn't, you are correct. You can tell whether a major scale or key has flats or sharps in it by the name of the scale. If a scale has the word flat in the name, it has flats in the key signature. Everything else has sharps with two exceptions. You already know the first exception, C major. C major doesn't have the word flat in it, so we know there are no flats. But C major also doesn't have sharps. The other exception is F major. F major has one flat, and we know that when we have one flat in the key signature, it's always and only a B flat in major keys. This one you'll just have to remember. One more point about key signatures before we move on to our third and final method for major scale construction. When we're shown a key signature, we can reverse engineer the information we've been given to be able to determine what major key this represents. For example, here we see three flats in treble and bass clef. Remember that with our key signature method, you go to the name of the scale and one further, and that tells you what your flats are. This also means that if you look at the second to last flat in a flat key signature, you'll know what key you're in. In this case, E flat is the key because we went to the name of the scale, E flat, and added one more, A flat. Three flats means E flat major. We can also reverse engineer our information about sharp key key signatures to determine what each of these means. Remember that the last sharp in our order of sharps is the leading tone. In the circled example, we see that the final sharp is A sharp. Up a diatonic half step from A sharp is B natural. So this key signature with five sharps in it is a B major key signature. Let's move on to our third method of constructing major scales. We've already discussed whole step and half step order. We've thoroughly covered the key signature method. Last but certainly not least is the circle of fifths. Some of you may be wondering, what is this circle of fifths? Well, remember we talked about intervals in a previous lecture? An interval is the distance between two pitches. A perfect fifth is an interval. What makes it a perfect fifth? We'll save the answer to that question for later. I'm going to start on a C, then move stepwise up to a G, then to a D, then an A, E, B, and F sharp. The longer notes you hear will be C, G, D, A, E, B, and F sharp. Notice that I pause every five steps or every perfect fifth. 
when we put those pitches on a circle of fifths and complete the sequence, they look like this. C at the top, up a perfect fifth to G, up another perfect fifth, D, followed by A, E, up another fifth to B, a perfect fifth above B is F sharp, and a perfect fifth above F sharp is C sharp. Now I'll start on a C, then move down stepwise to an F, then to a B flat, then an E flat, A flat, D flat, and G flat. The longer notes you hear will be C, F, B flat, E flat, A flat, D flat, and G flat, each time moving down five steps or a perfect fifth. When we put those pitches on a circle of fifths and complete the sequence, we'll be moving counterclockwise this time. They look like this. C, down a perfect fifth, F, down another perfect fifth, B flat. When we move a perfect fifth below B flat, we arrive on an E flat, then A flat followed by D flat, G flat, and one more perfect fifth down, C flat. Pulling both sides of the circle of fifths together, we see it completed. This is a major circle of fifths. Notice the three places on our circle that overlap. C sharp slash D flat, F sharp slash G flat, and B slash C flat. These are enharmonics. This is why we have them listed in pairs. You should also notice some familiar patterns. On the left side, starting on a B flat, and working our way counterclockwise. We see the order of flats. B flat, E flat, A flat, D flat, G flat, and C flat. Notice we didn't put an F flat on our circle of fifths. The reason is because F flat major is a hypothetical key. Technically it exists, but we don't need to put it on our major circle of fifths. Also, if we start on F and move clockwise, we see the order of sharps. It's the same pattern we recognize. F, C, G, D, A, E, and B, followed by F sharp and C sharp. One important thing to notice is that when we start on F and move to C and then G and then D, etc., there's no sharp next to any of those letters until we get down to F sharp and C sharp. Once again, F and C are the exceptions. We have an F sharp major, we have a C sharp major, but we don't have any other major keys with sharp in the name. We call this the circle of fifths because each time we move one letter name to the next tonic on the circle, we move an interval of a perfect fifth. Why does that matter? 
Remember C major, our key with no sharps or flats? When we move clockwise to G as our new tonic note, we add one sharp to the key signature. D major has two sharps. Move to the next degree on our circle, and we have A major, which has three sharps. E major has four sharps. B major has five sharps. F sharp major has six sharps, and we end with C sharp major, which has seven sharps. Remember, in the key of C major, everything's natural. In the key of C sharp, everything's sharp. Back to C major, no sharps, no flats. When we move counterclockwise to F as our new tonic note, we add one flat to the key signature. So F major has one flat. B flat major has two flats. E flat major has three flats. There are four flats in A flat major, five flats in D flat, six flats in G-flat, and finally seven flats, everything's flat, in the key of C-flat major. We can use all the information we've learned so far about our order of flats and sharps, along with the circle of fifths, to construct a major scale. Let's start with G major. What's the first step? Put it on the staff. Are you getting tired of hearing that yet? Too bad. Treble clef, G major, will start on a G and end on a G. Next we check our circle of fifths. Where do we find G on our circle? Right here. Because G is one degree clockwise from C major on the circle of fifths, we know it has one sharp. Now we use our order of sharps. What's the first sharp? F sharp. This is a G major scale. Let's try one with flats in the key signature. Write an A flat major scale using the circle of fifths. Start by putting it on the staff. We know it has four flats because A flat is four degrees counterclockwise from C. Now we use our order of flats. B, E, A, and D are the first four flats in our order of flats. We can add them in. B flat, E flat, A flat, we've got two of them, don't forget, and D flat. This is an A flat major scale. How about a D flat major scale? Start by putting it on the staff. Writing from a D to a D. Then we count degrees on our circle of fifths, moving counterclockwise because this scale has flats in it. One, two, three, four, five flats. And those flats would be B flat, E flat, A flat, D flat, we've got two of them, and one more, G flat. This is the circle of fifths method for writing a D flat major scale. Next, we'll construct an F-sharp major scale. Start by putting it on the staff. Then we count degrees on our circle of fifths, moving clockwise to F-sharp. One, two, three, four, five, and six. There are six sharps in the key of F-sharp major. What are the first six sharps in our order of sharps? F, two of them, C, G, D, 
A and E. Your turn. Using the circle of fifths, construct an E major scale. Remember, you can always pause the video if you need more time. Hopefully you started by putting it on the staff. If you wrote yours an octave higher than this, that's still a correct answer. Then we count degrees on our circle of fifths to find how many sharps are in the key of E major. One, two, three, and four. There are four sharps in E major, and those sharps are F, C, G, and D. This is an E major scale. One more. Construct a C flat major scale using the circle of fifths. If you did this correctly, you started by putting the pitches on the staff, then you counted degrees counterclockwise starting with F to see how many flats are in the key of C flat major. The correct answer is seven. What are our seven flats? B, E, A, D, G, C, and F. In other words, everything is flat. But you already knew that, didn't you? Being able to construct a major circle of fifths is something you'll need to practice. You might need to be able to do this on a test. A few more things are important to remember. C is the anchor for our circle of fifths. C is the key at the top with no sharps or flats. C sharp is the final key in the sharp sequence. And C flat is the final key in the flat sequence. We don't need to go any further. When you arrive at C sharp or you arrive at C flat, when writing in either side of your circle of fifths, you know it's time to stop. Always line up your enharmonics correctly. C sharp is enharmonic to D flat. F sharp is enharmonic to G flat. And B is enharmonic to C flat. When counting, circle of fifths degrees in either direction to determine how many flats or sharps a key has, never count C. Always start with one on F or G. This is because F has one flat and G has one sharp. If you start counting one on C major, you'll end up with the wrong number. The question I get most often at this point is, which one should I use? We talked about three different methods, but which is the one I should use if I'm supposed to write a major scale on a test? You need to understand and to be able to demonstrate any of these three methods. However, when you are asked to construct a major scale on a test, use the method that brings you the most accuracy. Also, it's a good idea to use a second method to check your work. In other words, if you're really comfortable using the circle of fifths, then use that. But you might want to use whole, whole, half, whole, 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 half to check your work and make sure you did it all correctly. On the other hand, if you're really comfortable with the whole step, half step method, and you write your scale out that way, it's probably wise to use the key signature method or the circle of fifths method to make sure you didn't miss anything along the way. 
Let's recap what we learned today. After this lecture, you should be able to demonstrate the three methods of scale construction. You should know the order of half steps and whole steps in a major scale. You should know your order of flats and order of sharps in a key signature. And you should be able to write your circle of fifths.